still, they're very fresh. I'm shocked it wasn't their first ban. They're going to ban Montaigne for their first Operator ban, though. What do you think about that? Probably a good idea, considering... I mean, the Montaigne from Yuna didn't have so much effect on Cafe because FaZe just really... They don't avoid Cafe necessarily. They're just stronger on every other map. Yeah. Um, Bank and Montaigne. That's a good combination, especially for FaZe. And especially when FaZe are starting on the attack. If you're the Sonics right now, you're starting on defense. This was FaZe's map pick, so you're choosing to start on the defense. You want to get off hot, especially after taking map number one away from them. This is uh, this is going to be a hard one for FaZe to battle through. Mira, I'm going to say Echo. Probably Echo, yes, yeah. Sir. We lose we've, the Echo. We've seen a lot of this. I know Redeemer's been a little bit upset by it. <laughs> uh, Poor hey. Taylor. Welcome to 2019 Siege, is what happens. Yep. You just got to get used to it. Mira and Echo aren't going to see a whole lot of playtime in any competitive match that has bans enabled, which is all of them at this point. So we're moving around one of Bank. And as I mentioned, this isn't really something we've seen from the Sonics. Even back in Challenger League, they did play it once or twice, but it wasn't a popular map for them. It's never been one where they've been super comfortable on. If it's a map where they're going to pull out like some insane strategies, then great. I just don't really trust that that's what this is. Well, I think something that I think is underrated for the transfer of Slebin and Gomphy is they both played on the same team together. Bro. They both played on Sisu, a very long standing, ever since your one season one team in Pro League. Obviously, different iterations of the roster throughout years. But Sisu is also notoriously pretty decent on bank. So maybe Slebin and Gomphy have brought something to the rest of the crew, gone to super their IGL, and said, hey, this is kind of what we ran on Sisu. Do you think this will work? Can we make adaptations to what we used to run on Sisu to make it fit our play style? You know, there's there's different ideas being brought in. You're not stuck in the same echo chamber of the same five people saying the same things and stuck in the same play styles. You kind of get to mix it up a little bit. So like you said, as long as we've banned the crap out of bank lately, but maybe Slevin and Gonfi are a difference maker in just bringing new ideology to the game. And, this map specifically. I like what you're saying there too, because um, unlike people may assume, this is not a very recent roster change, right? I know we all just found out about it like a week or so ago, um, but these players have been on this team, or at least rumored to have been on the team for a long, long time. And so they've had time to work with the rest of the guys in the Sonics. They've been in Pennsylvania for a little while now. And so um, perhaps the worst kept secret in Siege while it's been uh, known for a bit that they will be playing on the squad. And uh, yeah, so there has been time for them to share those strategies. There has been time for that sort of stuff. Sometimes we see roster move immediately before a major and it actually happened like right before a tournament. Then that stuff is a little bit less applicable, but no, totally in this situation, like that's uh, that's a good bet on what has happened. And similar to the way that uh, Faze are taking the, uh, the attack towards Fiction on Cafe, they're gonna be starting top down. And Gonfi was upstairs reinforcing the uh, the open area hatches, the one inside a stock in the stock hallway. Doesn't look like anyone from the Sonics is actually playing that, and there was no Jackal banned out, but no one opting to bring the Jackal to affirm that there's no one playing inside of open area. So it's going to take a minute here for FaZe to grow the map, and obviously Bank, one of the largest maps in terms of square footage to clear. Hmm. It's going to take a minute, and time control was already an issue on Cafe. FaZe may be good on Bank, but time control, the Sonics seem to be dealing well when FaZe is really trying to execute with 30 seconds, 45 seconds left. Maybe there are strategies coming in from the uh, players from the finish team, but it seems like right now the Sonics are going pretty standard. They brought a lot of C4s, a lot of plant denial. Um, super on the smoke in uh, the blue stairs. This is actually something we saw a couple of games ago, last matchup, last best of three. We saw a very aggressive smoke in this position. And it's interesting, right? Because you've got the SMG-11 and mostly the shotgun to a lot there. You can delay some times so and you pop those, pop those gas canisters early. Uh, it seemed like he did back off, though, once his hatch started to open up. So he's not going to commit to it as hard as we saw in the last best of three. Um, but it's a similar strategy. So maybe taking notes on what was going on stream earlier. That's uh, some very unfortunate timing there for FaZe. They had two members over by server. The smoke of Super and the pulse of Neptunes. They opened up the server hatch earlier than when Mav, okay, as he shoots Cameraman, before Cameraman could open up the CCTV hatch. So they couldn't catch anyone on the rotate back. They allowed that presence and that retreat for free just off of milliseconds of missed timing. The good news is they do have wall open. There's so much intel right now. You have Pulse, Valkyrie, and Gonfi's gonna hit a nasty shot through those uh, Maverick holes. Gonfi prone, looking to launch out that Nitro Cell. They have two Nitro Cells. They have Evil Eye, they have the Smokes. Gonfi, another Nitro Cell here onto Yuna. The flashbangs come out into the red hallway. Cameraman trying to vault in, and I don't think anyone on Sonics is well aware of Cameraman's positioning inside of CCTV. He's gonna spray through the soft wall and grab Gonfi. A trade out now from Goddess on the garage control. Another one here from Slevin, firing through with the all. It's all up to Mav, and that is the Sonics. 
easy comeback there on the round. They lose presence of CC momentarily, but they fire on back and they take round number one. Oftentimes we see this bomb site come down to how well can you deny that plant. It's very much one where the nitro cells are so key, and this uh, round was no exception. Um, a lot of that round was won just by the fact that they were able to stop people from planting, using those nitro cells, using that uh, pulse for information. But I think a big part of it also was Goddess in the garage, picking up that 2k late into the round. I don't know if they win that one if Goddess doesn't uh, take the long angle and hit the shots that she was hitting in that one. So. Credit to all the players on Sonics for that. Um, it's a standard hold. It worked out pretty much as expected, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to hold down a bomb site like that. I talked about this yesterday in the uh, Reciprocity versus Chaos game that I cast with Taylor. Flexibility for members on your team to play multiple roles. That's not something we've seen out of the Sonics at all, really. You know, they have dedicated fraggers, they have dedicated support players, mm -hmm. but now we see Slevin playing the Maestro, Gomphy on a dock, and getting Goddess involved in on a fragment roll on Jaeger. I really like Whoa. this look from Sonics, and this is the same, almost the same setup they had last time around. Slevin was on the Maestro, Goddess was on the Jaeger. I really like this alteration here for the Sonics, demonstrating that with Slevin and Gomphy, they can start to make some changes. No one's hard stuck in one particular role. And I mean, Goddess and Super had a particularly phenomenal map number one. Get him out there if you can. And I mean, we've never really seen that from the Sonics before. Goddess and Super have always been hard stuck on support roles just because that was the way that the Sonics ran before. I really like the role adaptation from Super as well, Attackers going to maybe a more passive role um, on Smoke. When I casted this team all through Challenger League Season number 9, one of the bigger criticisms I had of them was that Super was on a lot of fragging roles, and it seemed like when he died early, which was, you know, relatively common, not the most ever, but it happened, certainly. Um, the team almost lost direction, and it seemed like he didn't really have that leadership that he provides to the squad. If he's staying alive as a smoke, he can do a lot more of that work and sort of control the game in ways that he can't really if he's dead. So I like that he's playing on this uh, role. And again, that comes a lot because of the roster changes. You have a lot more flexibility in your roster now. So you can do that maybe where Super Felty couldn't do it before. So for the Sonics, they'll now be defending top side. They have this left CEO wall wide open for long angles to be held by both Slevin and Gonfi with those ACOGs deep. And Perfe is clearing out the majority of the map once again. They do take pride in their drone work and they do take pride in their intel in regarding to flanks. They've also brought out the uh, Lion on Ion. That's a tongue twister <laughs> right there. But uh, that'll shut down some rotations. Really though, the Sonics, I mean, they're, they're well equipped to handle this in terms of their lineup. And the way that everyone is playing right now for the Susquehanna Sonics, I worry for FaZe Clan. That was only one round, but that was, again, another round where time control was the demise of FaZe and excellent support play from the Sonics. The oppression we saw being brought from Rogue when they were bringing a lion last time, uh, we saw best of three here in Montreal, was uh, very destructive, especially on bank. You can really corner people and do a lot of damage. Um, so Rogue are exploiting that. It seems like FaZe Clan are willing to exploit the lion as well. Sonic should be prepared for it. Super's actually most common attacker in Pro League season number 10 so far has been the lion. So they should be ready to deal with it. But still, that's going to be a, a big thing they're going to have to worry about later on into this round. The first kill comes down as Astro will hit a headshot onto Neptune, playing through the window. So the castle off the board. They're not a huge operator. I think they're going to let sort of Neptunes want to frag in a position like that. There's the first lion charge. It'll be Goddess actually who gets a kill because of it. So Cameraman really not getting that uh, utilized to his advantage. Gonna put it into a four on four. We've just passed that minute mark in the round. So we've got less than 60 seconds for the players on phase plan to start aggressing into this bomb site. You can tell like they haven't gotten a ton of ground. Unisil out here in the skylight, he hasn't gotten a great opportunity to walk into the bomb site yet. Holding some angles seems to know that there's somebody inside of Janitor. That will be super who's getting a lot of pressure put onto him down below the hatch. Somebody might be trying to throw some stuff at him. Maverick, of course, has a lot of those frag grenades too, and there's a long angle, but Slevin loses it. It's Ion to hit the headshot. They put a team at a bit of advantage. One more of those Lion EE1D is going to be utilized, and Goddess has to sit still super as well. Two of the three remaining members on Sonic just trying to hold down this bomb site. Gonfi, the last one, too. Playing on that dock and try to heal him up a little bit. The plant had started, you've seen, but Ion gets a double. Goddess shuts him down. We're going back and forth. A carousel of kills. Goddess is all alone. And again, on this Jaeger, an unfamiliar role for her. She's going to have to deal with a post plant situation. And three members, one on the window, two in her wall, in her sight. Oh, and Mav's going to shut her down, though. Face clan equals. Ah, uh, it was looking really good for the Sonics there again in terms of time control, but the Lion. EOD is detonating, holding everyone in place so they couldn't get in position to deny entry in through the breach and in through the walls that were opened up by the Sonics in their own defensive setup. And unfortunately there for, uh, for two members, they tried to battle it out against Ion. They lost pretty well. That V308 ripping through heads in the hands of Ion and the utility doing a lot of work there. So 
credit to Ion and a beautiful round there and for the entirety of the Sonics. Looks like you're going to go elsewhere now. I can't read that from here, but... Uh, I'm sure yeah. we'll, we'll read eventually. I can see that there was a six-pick to Amazi, but I think this is Teller's Archives? It is. There okay. we go. I mean, that's expected, right? Not a lot of people love open area. We've seen teams experiment and be successful with it, certainly, but it's definitely the least popular bomb site on this map. So, Attack Teller's Archives is standard, and especially for a team like Sonic, who aren't as experienced on this map, I would be very surprised if they want to experiment with the bomb sites that people don't typically like to play on. Probably they're going to sort of just stick to the meta. Um, would have been interesting to see them stick at Executive CEO because they lost it and they can go back, but I don't hate that they go here either. No, I don't I don't mind the swap up. I think, honestly, that round may have looked deceptively one-sided for FaZe there, but I mean, a gunfight goes the opposite direction and Ion loses that against Slebin. It's an entirely different round. You know, Ion really popped off on that one for FaZe and the Sonics were very, very close to pulling that one back themselves. Uh, just unfortunately that the... Uh, Hey, Yuna was able to slug boy his way in through the breach hole. He proned all the way from top square balcony through the breach hole behind the desk just to get a plant down. So I, I like the, the commitment to the prone action there for, uh, for Yuna on that round. And honestly, like I said, that one gunfight goes the opposite direction and slubbing kills Ion off rip. That's an entirely different round. That 30 OD doesn't go off and hold the members in place when they're trying to rotate to contest the entry for phase. That's, that's a close one. So I would have been completely fine if they had gone back upstairs or if they had... Uh, Swapped up anyway. Slevin taking a little bit of damage on that top floor, and I saw Super dancing around with the idea of an abasement on Pulse. So it seems like a lot of map control is going to be Sonic's goal right now, and that's pretty common with this bomb site. Typically, er, right now he's still in the staff room, so he's on this first floor. He's around where the bomb site is at. Probably not going to extend into the basement unless it really calls for it later on. Um, but you've got that option for Sonic's right, and they took that initial gunfight. It's probably smart from Slevin to not over aggress on the Maestro. If you're attacking people who are up on that uh, parking garage. You can really put yourself in some danger. You don't want to lose your Maestro early, so that's fine. Just back off. You took some damage, kind of lost that one, so fair enough by him. Um, at this point, though, FaZe Clan, they're going to have to deal with a lot, and that's not going to help them out. Surely two don't just run into him. Slevin is going one up. Oh, it doesn't quite get the second one, though. Missing a couple of shots. The entry through top square, having a lot of resistance provided here by the Susquehanna Sonics. And Super also used his Nitro Cell incredibly early. Sprays to the wall from the Roni. He's going to drop Astro to about 20 HP or so. They're still down below providing calls for everyone playing topside in the entry for FaZe Clan here. This seems non-existent. Super will grab one before being immediately traded out by Mav, doing a handful of damage to him as well. So the health advantage strongly on the side of the Susquehanna Sonics and the man advantage now. Slevin's still playing well upstairs with Gonfi. And Goddess and Neptune's holding down the site with rotations through the small office in open area. There's a lot of mobility, a freedom of mobility really for the Sonics. Just, just there hasn't been much map control gained by FaZe. It's fine play by Super. I guess, again, I want Sonic to be able to hold their composure now that he's down. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. He can continue to lead this team. The other guys, of course, got big brains on the Sonics, too. So they should be able to figure this out one way or another, despite it's not all that familiar of a map. One more kill, though, and they can equalize for FaZe Clan. So Sonic's definitely not in clear waters just yet. You've still got three players on the side of FaZe Clan, and they're bringing grenades. Little bit of damage to Goddess. You don't have a Jaeger on your defensive side to catch those, so you really kind of just got to be lucky that those don't hit you. Oh, a great peek from Goddess, and she'll get her second one, too, as they all just charge into her SMG-11. Really well played. That leaves it all in a count round. He's just out getting into the building, but Gompy's ready for him. Sonics, that was a very dominant round. Nearly a flawless one there if Super hadn't died, and honestly, he did his job. So. Totally, totally. Man, beautiful round there for the Sonics, and just denying entry at every possible point there for FaZe, and it seems like even though the Sonics haven't played this map a whole lot in recency, at least publicly, they may have been scrimming it a crap ton and just saving it for a moment like this. Obviously, Goddess, the former member of Cloud9, who won DreamHack Montreal last year with the team that's now known as Reciprocity. I mean, just got to remember what that run took. Just got to remember what that entire roster had to do to push through all the other much higher positioned in the standings and much higher regarded North American teams and out of regional teams through that tournament. I mean, they toppled EG pretty handedly. They toppled, uh, Recipro or not Reciprocity, back when they were, uh, back when they were Noble. Attackers so Noble never turned into wreck. I'm losing my mind. But they, they toppled a lot of good teams back in Impact Montreal just to make it, including Millennium, Mocket, that turned into Navi. She's got to remember what that took, and she's got to be bringing that experience. And right now she's leading the team in kills, which is something we also don't see a whole lot from her. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that is due to the role swap. I think in terms of, like, Goddess as a player, a lot of people have been critical of the fact that maybe she's not flexible enough, maybe she's not good in those fragging roles. Well, she's really proven a lot of people wrong in this one, right? Playing the Jagger and getting her kills, like, this has been very impressive showing from her. So I really like this to come out. 
Um, from the players in the Sonics, I think it's a bit of an adjustment, right? Um, you talk about their play last day, and I didn't watch any of the matches, but I did have a talk with some of the players on how they thought that went, and it seemed like Slebin and Gonfi weren't doing a whole lot of the entry frags. So the fact they're able to swap that up to Goddess even, being able to get more of those frags early on in the rounds and do a lot more of that gunner positions, hey, it's unorthodox perhaps, but it's seemingly working well. So yeah, credit to Sonics for the adaptation. So we're going to go back downstairs in the defense. It's been opened up to the availability of the Sonics. They lose their CEO defense pretty narrowly, but the other two rounds look pretty dominant in their favor. They get to go back down to a bomb site that uh, FaZe had struggles with in terms of their time control, and that's been a, a persistent issue for them so far through this series. And a little bit against TSM. I felt like their pace against TSM was a little bit quicker than it has been so far against the Sonics. It feels like FaZe just have less of an idea of what to expect coming up from the Sonics so far. They're playing slower. It's almost like they're playing a little bit tired. I think that would be very understandable from them. Um, they played a long day, as you've definitely highlighted so far, and uh, it's not even close to being over, right? You've got a minimum of four more maps to play, including this one. Maybe five if you want to keep on winning. So it's like, it's a long road ahead for FaZe Clan, and uh, I'm sure they're not super in love with that idea, but it's that or go home for them. So, yeah, maybe a little bit slower so far in this one, um, but understandable why that might be. So the collapse taking a while here to formulate above server stairs, trying to get the super out. And the last time around that they did this, they opened up the server hatch and they forced Neptunes and super to fall back. Neptunes has already fallen back now to the CC door, so they're leaving Super alone over inside of server stairs, but he's going to bail out here in the Thermite Charge, and the CC hatch isn't opened yet. Again, just more timing on the side of Phase Clan in terms of communication and coordination of opening up the hatches in tandem to catch anyone in server falling back. It's a pretty routine process that everyone should go through on Attack and Bank when there's a server hold, and yet, man, Phase are just not having any luck with that, and oh, it looks no. like we died. So that's a little bit unfortunate. It's the second time we've seen that on this map today, unfortunately. Um, and this one was a little bit into the round. So, like, yeah. nobody had died yet. And in some senses, I, we definitely couldn't call who was going to win that round. No. Um, Just like, love 5v5. You always hate to see it um, when it happens. Just like the evil eye going off in the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you love that? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, take a breather. Looks like the whole lobby crashed because no one else on phase looks like they're trying. Yuna's not even looking at his monitor, so... <laughs> Either he died and the game's still going on, but I'm yeah. pretty sure, yeah, everyone's everyone's leaned out like a kickstand right now. No totally. one's playing right now, so. Server died. Unfortunate. It's, I mean, we're not admins. We're not going to make the call, but. It's very likely a rehost. It's a rehost with, uh, yeah. with the round being replayed. Most likely, again, I, there's, there's no advantage in that round other than time control, again, being the demise of phase, but uh, I imagine we'll get a rehost with same site, same ops. Mm -hmm. That's what you see. Like, I, I don't think it's, like, it sucks, obviously, because you wasted, like, two minutes in that round. Um, but nothing had really been given away. I don't think it was a crazy different strategy that was being played out by the defenders. So, yeah, I mean, it sucks, but it's esports, right? Yep. This type of stuff happens. Um, we're in a giant convention center right now with a whole bunch of buttons and wires going on. It's amazing we don't have more problems. We have plenty of problems in Valencia, too. Yeah. So... I mean, and sometimes it didn't even have to do with computers breaking. No. It's, not, it's, it's the fire alarms going <laughs> off. That was a fun time. It's uh, just be happy there's no fire alarms here in Montreal. Oh, there's fire Yet. alarms. They just haven't gone off. Well. I'm waiting. Well, we don't know when this is. It was uh, funny. We were sitting backstage, and Taylor saw, uh, like, a fog machine, like some of the fog from a fog machine <laughs> pouring out from behind the curtain. He's like, oh, my God, the stage is on fire. It's like, no, no, no. Trust me. We'd hear a lot more panic if something was on fire. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we did get the admin call. It is going to be a replay of the round. It's currently 2-1 for the Susquehanna Sonics. They are currently up 1-0 in map count. They were victorious on Cafe Dostoevsky 7-4 after taking a 3-3 split on the attacking side. And now on bank, they're currently up 2-1. There was no way to judge which way that round was going. And even yep. if there was, judging by the precedent we set in Raleigh, yeah, not going <laughs> to. Wait, wasn't FaZe in that game too? Yeah, they were. It was FaZe against Empire, wasn't it? The Rainbow Six Gods just hate FaZe Clan, I guess. I guess. Sorry, That's... FaZe. I believe it, too, because this is a very storied team that has never won anything internationally. It's, it's hard being a FaZe fan, dude. It is. It is very hard. Also kind of hard being a Sonics fan. I mean, they... Probably. Well, no, no, no. They won Challenger League. That was probably an exciting moment for, uh, for Sonics fans. So, yeah. Sonics have done more winning than uh, FaZe Clan. Maybe not. They've no. won uh, locally, too. I mean, FaZe went to the finals in Rio. Yeah. 
a little bit better than a, uh, a challenger. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, the victory was uh, better, but maybe it was a little bit more excited, maybe more happiness spread among Sonic hey, fans go. than than Phase Plan fans. Honestly, I'm just I'm worried looking at this Phase Plan team performing yes. right now. I'm worried. This is a team that was highly regarded heading into the tournament as probably being one of the outliers and one of the the front runners to take it, mm -hmm. especially with uh, with Latin America losing one of their like strongest teams in MIBR who just fell off the face of the planet in yep. Latin American Pro League in the first half of season 10. So now it comes it becomes like a three kind of four way with ints but kind of three way race Mostly for those three. top two spots to get yep. to uh, Japan. And FaZe has notoriously made it to the finals of a lot of Pro League finals lately. So um, it's probably not all up in the air for them to make it to SI but lock in the SI spot early. That'd be nice. It'd It'd also nice. give most likely it would provide another online qualifier spot for Latin America. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe there'd be three this time, considering there were two last year. Yeah. I mean, that would be really nice for uh, for LATAM. Their other opportunity, of course, is Liquid. Yep. We're already in the bracket stage, thanks to a uh, win against G2 Esports, which I think probably the biggest upset we've seen here in Montreal. Um, probably. G2, I mean, despite losing Raleigh, still probably the best team at this event on paper coming into it. Um, clearly not as, uh, as good as Liquid in that matchup. But uh, Latin America, even if FaZe Clan uh, fails you here, you have one more team, and I'm sure they're going to be rallying behind Liquid. They're used to rallying behind Liquid, and unlike FaZe fans, Liquid fans have uh, historically had a little bit more to cheer for. Yeah, Atlantic City is a good memory that everyone likes to bring up yeah. over and over and over and over again. It's not like North America has anything to bring up, so I don't blame them. Um, it's like we're just getting ready. It looks like FaZe is getting everybody fist bumps. Yeah, I think, I think we're getting right back underway in just a moment on bank just a reminder for anyone who has just tuned in the susquehanna sonics a little bit of an upset took map number one on cafe seven to four they are now one up oh in the map count in the best of three we are on bank it is sonics on the defense they're up two one and it sounds like we're just double checking everything but the game is back underway ladies and gentlemen let's jump right in it's bank it's susquehanna sonics they're gonna be defending downstairs against phase on the attack so, kind of, this will be the third time we're seeing this bomb site. I mean, it's the second round that the Sonic's going to play it because we're replaying this round. Um, and yeah, Locker CCTV, this is one where they have looked pretty good. I mean, the first round that they played this, standard hold, pretty much played it as you'd expect to. It was good Attacker utility use for the Sonic. It was good long bomb. range um, battling coming up with Maestro and stuff. So, there was a lot of uh, good play there. When we got through a bit of last time, uh, round number four, it seemed similar, right? It was a five on five still because most of the Sonic's players were playing it pretty passively. Um, so it's the same thing really from one. And I don't expect the second time we play um, play this round, I don't expect there's gonna be huge changes from Sonic's, even if Gomfy is, you know, running around upstairs as he is right now. Yeah, we've seen this a couple times from Gonfi. The first time they defended this, he reinforced the open area hashes, not yeah. going for it this time. And you can repeat up and running. I mean, honestly, for... Uh, for Phase Clan so far, really, it's about expediting the time. And if they can just get some more consistent droning done to make sure there's no one top floor, because there never has been anyone roaming for the Sonics. They're all playing on site every time they defend this bomb site. They're obviously going to be waiting for the Sonics to pull that jackal or the uh, the jacket of the deck in the back pocket and start sending someone upstairs on a flank if they ever get too presumptuous and kind of skip that step. Just speeding up the droning would be a very good thing here for FaZe to be able to have some more time on the execute. And then, like I said, the coordination on opening up those hatches so you can catch those members retreating from server and make sure it's not just a free retreat and they didn't stall you for two minutes for free. In this round, similar to every other round, Super is the most aggressive player on the uh, smoke in those blue stairs. And again, he's been very quick to fall back. He's not wanting to die here because he knows, no, he's on a smoke. That's an operator you want to keep alive as long as possible because especially on this bomb site, plant denial is huge. Uh, but you saw his outline for just a moment there. He's going to be sitting on the top of stairs. And when Phase Clan eventually gets to that moment, he's going to be the first little bit of resistance that will likely fall back uh, as soon as they put any bit of pressure on him. But yes, as you mentioned, it's going to be important that they get through this top two floors very quickly and uh, that they can focus on Super and focus on these hatches sooner rather than later. Well, here we go. Cameraman opening up the CC hatch, and the call's not coming out. You can see Neptune deck. starting to retreat. Will Super make it before the hatch gets open? The hatch is open. He's vaulting up on the desk, and he still gets back to safety. Wow. Good work there for Super and Neptune's but expedited pace here for FaZe. They have server hatch open. They have CC hatch open. They have server control now. It's free real estate to take. Their execute is going to have more than a minute to work with here to bait out utility. This is looking a lot better for FaZe. 
Yeah, it's a lot faster, if anything else. Uh, it's still five on five, so we're kind of in the same spot we were when the rehost happened. We're there a little bit quicker, and I think that's definitely an advantage for phase clan. Here they go with the Texan Dynamite trying to open up this wall on the site, and they have this really uh, great line made out as well. They can try to use some some vocals. They've been punished for that before, don't get me wrong. Round number one haunts them still, and Gonfi looking for these angles, wanting to do it again. Um, but it's that option there they can try to use if they need so. And Gonfi's still holding on to his Nitro Cell. He's got one minute to try to bait this out and let it rip, right? FaZe Clan, if they can bait out all of this utility and then go for the plants, they can even plant 5v5 technically. Neptune's on a great hammer, though. Gonfi's uh, Black Eye has still not been called out, and that's a huge amount of informational advantage for the song. No IQ or anything. It's going to really hurt FaZe Clan, but they're going to get the first kill. It's going to be a frag grenade on to Gonfi. They're going to continue to grab this back, though. And again, with that information, people run on in. Slubbin and Neptunes can quickly capitalize off of that. And again, it's this play from uh, the garage on uh, the Maestro that's being brought out, right? There's no pressure coming from FaZe Clan to come back around and actually stop that. They've got the cameras. They're aware of this. Nitro still has already been utilized. It's another frag grenade being prepped by Mav, but is he going to let it rip? Doesn't seem like he wants to right now. Holding on to it as Yuna starts this plant. He's gonna land on anybody though. That toxic bay gonna make him get off of that planter too. Yuna's got really no hope in this situation. They got nine seconds to get this plant down. Yuna's gonna start choking on it as he starts to get this plant down. Three on two though. Ion and Map look at a couple of hills. They can just stop this and there goes the diffuser. It's gonna get planted. And face man in a wonderful position. Sonics and Super. Slevin and Super. Last two players alive. Super barely alive. He's actually on a desk. Gonna get picked back up. So they've got a lot of time in their hands still. The Sonics. Don't need to panic, but it can't be slow for them. And Ion in a great position holding these hatches. It's a difficult bomb site to retake just because of the hatches, and Slevin's not aware of it. Ion gets his double kill, and Super the last man on the round. Gonna have to go pretty huge if he wants to win this one for his team. Otherwise, it's gonna like a tie game for FaZe Clan. There it is. Much better there for FaZe Clan to be able to bait out the utility and have a lot of time in the back pocket. The plant still didn't come down until there was 10 seconds left, but that's what you need when you're attacking the basement on bank. You can't get caught up in the minutia of everything else. Your primary focus if there's a server hold is getting that open and getting that real estate, opening the hatches in tandem so that you can catch people on the retreat. And even though they didn't, they still had all the time they ever could have desired to work with to be able to make sure that the Sonics are just dumping utility. And we saw that Gonfi got killed before his nitro cell could be detonated. He did launch it out, but he was just sitting there on the ground after he died to the frag grenade. After being put on one HP, from peeking those Maverick holes that Cameraman had made on the server wall facing Rack. And then Neptunes, in response to that, launched out his Nitro Cell early because he got off the camera that he was watching. Need they needed someone else. They needed Gonfi to get back on that cam to tell him not to throw that Nitro Cell to keep it in the back pocket. Once both the Nitro Cells were gone, really, it was down to Super on the smokes. He, get hit with, he got hit with the nade with the smoke in the back pocket, and it kind of all collapsed from there. All the utility he really had to be able to deal with a plant attempt was gone, and that's because of the time control that FaZe had. So it's two round wins for FaZe Clan, it's also two plants for FaZe Clan. Uh, I think this is a great example of how FaZe Clan adapt differently when they're playing against international competition compared to Latin America. Inside of Latin America, they don't do a whole lot of planting. They like to just sort of take their frags, take their battles against everybody else, have a little bit lower uh, number of plants compared to most teams inside of Pro League on all regions. Uh, but when they come internationally, they're right up there with everybody else, right? They're utilizing the plants as much as they possibly can. And they understand that, okay, we can get this down against a lot of these less aggressive teams. We're going to let us do this. Um, they're not all going to just charge on in. And so that's one of the you know, brilliant things about Face Man. They've got so much international experience. They can recognize these differences, and uh, they can be just fine when they use them. Reload! Is is that an extended barrel on Goddess? Oh my, Astro's going for the rush immediately into Garage. This could be devastating here for the Sonics. That Evil Eye is going to spot him momentarily, and oh boy, the uh -oh. impact doesn't take it out. The second one will, but they're well aware of his position. It's going to come down to the 1v1 between Astro and Slebin right now. Immediate aggression here for FaZe. Holding the angle for the peak and the pre-fire. Astro sends Slebin to the grave. There goes your Alda. There goes your long angle control. Now Gonfi subbing in, throwing in a Nitro Cell, but it's got us to win it out, even after I mocked her for having the extended barrel. Nails the headshot, but now you've lost your ACOG to play the long angle. Even though you lose Astro for it, you take down an Evil Eye and you get rid of the Alda. That's a good push there for FaZe to be able to eliminate that pressure. And like we talked about last round, they weren't establishing that pressure onto Garage. This time they get it out of the way early. Trend Center. Everybody's going to start running that extended barrel now. Especially since guys about to pop off. Get that ace. I'm waiting for it. Yeah, hey, I don't doubt it. She's been going off this whole map. Exactly. You don't doubt a girl who's got stats like that. Been very impressive so far in this map and in the last map as well. Uh, strong stuff coming out from the Sonic and the Goddess in particular. So yeah, we're about halfway through this round, and SQ are looking pretty pretty all right. They did lose their Maestro, and you can't underplay that, despite the nice plays coming out 
to uh, get the trade. It's still Zofia for a Maestro, and I think FaZe Clan, they're so fine with that. They're very much happy to take it. It's all about that plant denial, because we're on Locker CCTV. The fact that you've been able to take down a huge plant denial operator, a huge information operator, uh, a huge good gun operator, Maestro's just good, uh, and now he's off the board. So now the execute for FaZe Clan. Coming down, and once again, they don't have to worry about the long angle in terms of an ACOG. They do have flanks being held right now by Ion. Uh, oh, it looks like Ion's going to head to the garage too, trying to fill in the position that Astra was felled on. So that means there's three up for the plant, and that's going to be Mav, Cameraman, and Yuna all pushing in. Goddess is now filled into the long angle, obviously sometimes playing Maestro. We'll know what to do, just does not have that ACOG advantage or the 81 bullet advantage. And Ion will be the first to contest to make sure that Goddess is unable to hold this position. They don't have the evil eye to watch. Gomfi, though, will take down Cameraman, so it's just Yuna going for the plant, and he's almost done. The Nitro Cell okay, comes out in the it. final millisecond there. Ion will take down Goddess, though, eliminating the long angle, and now everyone in the Sonics have to panic to react. Mav about the CC hatch launching a fragment and in spots one inside of CC and there goes Gomfi trying to get aggressive under the hatch. Cardiac sensor out for Neptune's calling out one upstairs and Super's going to try and hit the flank. Leaving sight alone means that Ion has free entry into the objective through the red hallway and Mav's going to prone his way in. Recollecting the diffuser, Super is heading to the top four but Neptune's on the cardiac sensor knows that the rush is coming to the red hall, has them both lined up. Does a little bit of damage to Ion but escaping into the lockers now. Mav going for the plant and Ion has to hold out, rips through Neptune's, the flank coming in from Super, pings on the wall but the ping is late. He can't get it. The plant is completed down to the 1v2. Full HP pressed up against a soft wall. More pings coming out from the default camera. And Mav will shut it down. The skeleton key in full effect. And FaZe, a scramble at a half of a round there. But they're able to pull it out through pure desperation. A story of two flanks between FaZe Clan and Sonics. You saw Ion rotating over to Garage. And I am always skeptical of a Garage late flank because it can take so long to get there. But he had the impact, right? He killed Goddess. He's able to get in, get a couple more kills as well, and really disrupt the Sonics, make it into that chaotic environment they wanted. And at the same time, Super was going upstairs. He was on the third floor at some point, also wanting you to do a bit of a longer flank, but it came out later. And it came out in a time where you're like, your team's in a two on two. I don't love that play, especially since he's an operator like Smoke. I mean, you're so crucial to help stop that plant and stop people from getting in. Then he was in the one on two, tried to clutch it out, and uh, that's a tough battle for him. I don't blame him for losing the one on two. But I just question the initial decision to go for that flank and to try to make that hero play, and most importantly, leave Neptunes alone. That was kind of the worrisome thing for me is that Super went all the way to the top floor. It's a lot of time to burn, and obviously, a lot of the flank denial set up for Phase Clan will be on the middle portion of the map, the middle floor. So he's trying to avoid all of that. But you're right, he did leave Nap alone on site for a pretty long amount of time. And unfortunately for Neptunes there, he did a little bit of damage to Ion, but he then comes sprinting towards the rotate there. In that situation, you technically have a one-on-one -on -one because Mav is putting Plant down. He does not have a gun out, and there's like six seconds on the clock. If he pulls off that, he's going to be planting into the overtime. So maybe Nep a little more prepared for that engagement, the gunfight off-rip. Maybe he was thinking that uh, Ion would be deeper, kind of standing directly on Mav to cover. And then, yeah, Super just too far away to help in the moment. And unfortunately for the Sonics, they kind of fall apart on that one. And they lost the they lost the Meister early, right? So Goddess has to fill in. I don't think they were expecting the second flank. And Astro's push in, getting rid of that evil eye. But they would have no idea that Ion was coming for that flank through Garage. Just great adaptation there from FaZe all around. Hard to read into those stats because, again, uh, we had a rehost two rounds ago, but still five kills in two rounds from Ion. Pretty impressive from what we saw from him, so I like that. It's, again, the third round that FaZe Clyde have won, and it's going to be the third round where they get that plant down. So really focusing on that here on bank up against the Sonics. Now, Super taking a lot of damage. Last time they were on the bomb site, I mean, or at least in this position with Super on Pulse, he died early, but it was fine because he got the trade and he still did quite a bit of damage. If the same thing happens, but he doesn't get those kills, he doesn't get that damage, that is a really big problem because he's been, again, a very crucial player on this team. Um, he's got a Nitro Cell. Ideally, he doesn't just waste it. I don't know about this play for him then. So that drone just got shot. I think there's someone covering from server stairs for Super. I'm not sure, though. A Nitro Cell being sent out to the Janitor closet, and he almost gets two. But instead, no damage will be done. Perfect evacuation there. He's got support from Goddess right now. Neptunes, though, will take down Mav. Now everyone trying to pinch in on a super for phase, but it's a bait. Everyone on Sonic's collapsing a bottom. Another peak coming out. Neptune's looking for two in the depths of the open area. It's killing a lot of time here for Phase Clan. Again, Neptune's coordination with Super has been fantastic. That's what you want from the Pulse, right? He's feeding him that information. He's up close and personal. He's taking a little bit of damage, but it's fine. After getting another kill on Neptune, now Super pushes a little bit uh, too much for him to chew off, it seems. Ion is able to put him to bed. Dropping down at Slevin, taking a little bit of damage as well. It's just been a very chaotic start to this round as we just passed that half-minute mark. 
It's going to be a four on three. The Sonic's, again, a little bit comfortable with this. Um, you haven't lost crucial operators. You've still got your Mute. You've still got your Maestro, uh, Mozzie up as well. Face down, I think, with a little bit of an advantage. It is more of an attacker side of bomb site, too. They're going to ignore Executive CEO after they lost it in that second round and totally focus on the basement, totally focus on this first floor part of archive pole they've been liking. Slevin will equalize the numbers, taking the head off of Cameraman, so he's happy with that. And Gonfi lurking on that top floor, playing this hatch inside Attackers of the janitor room. It could be a deadly spot for him to be in, um, but it's something also that FaZe Clan should be aware of and be able to drone that out. The question is, did they? And based on the fact that I haven't seen them upstairs too much, they're not too worried about it, maybe not. Slevin gets another kill with the Ulta in hand, and he's been very good adapting to that role. We've talked about how he's been a little bit different in terms of picking that up recently for the Sonics. Two players on phase plan will start doing work. It's Yuna with a headshot, Ion with another one, leaving all on a Slevin. He's going to need the 4K in this round if he wants his team to be able to tie it up and go 3 3 to the half. The plant will start with Yuna, makes him a one on one. Oh, does he see the planter though? Walked right on past him. He's actually going to get it planted down. Now he sees him though, and can he get the second one? Yes, he can! Oh, Slevin comes back forward and gets the triple, gets this disable as well. The Susquehanna Sonics will equalize, and very good play coming out from the newly support, I suppose, Slevin. Transfer's putting in work, Slevin and Gomfi having a field day, but Goddess as well. Tacking in a lot of support, and unfortunately the scoreboard won't show that at the end of this game because of the rehost, but man, the Sonics, they're pulling rounds out of thin air. And that's another thing that we've never really seen from them so far through their run in Pro League is their ability to claw rounds back that you shouldn't win. Yeah. That one they definitely should not have won, but Slevin's individual prowess gives them the victory. We equalize at a 3-3 at the half. It's now FaZe heading to the defense on their own map pick, already down a map. Man, the Sonics are looking good. <laughs> it seems like this roster change has really brought uh, what they needed on the Sonics, right? And it's it was so risky, it happening, and it was so, like questionable if it was actually going to work because Slevin and Gompi hadn't had the most Attackers recent success in Pro League, because Sonics have been struggling a lot with keeping their players alive. It was worrying to me as an analyst, I think a lot of fans as well. Um, but yeah, here they come in DreamHack Montreal. The adaptation again, I already highlighted it, but I want to mention one more time. Yesterday, the Sonics didn't perform how they wanted to. They lost to TSM, but they got beat bad by TSM. Yep. It wasn't pretty for them, and I know they were very unhappy with how uh, sort of their entry roles were going. This time they're changing things and it's working for them, right? They're getting, not even every single round are they getting the entry kill. In fact, for the past first couple of these rounds, it was FaZe Clan who were leading in terms of winning those opening frags. Um, but still, I mean, Sonic's clawing this back and up against one of the best teams in the world. Very prepared to call FaZe Clan that. This has been a very good showing for them across two maps. Like I said, it's just getting more and more worrisome here for FaZe. This, this is a game that they're heavily expected to win, especially on Bank being their map pick. This is getting this is getting dangerous now for FaZe. And you're on your elimination map. You are four rounds away from being knocked out of DreamHack and being sent packing and sitting in the stands for the rest of the weekend. And that is not something you want to do if you're any team. And for FaZe Clan, having the expectations they did coming into this, man, it's uh, it's hard to see, but you, on the flip side, it's been such a beautifully executed best of three so far for the Sonics through a map and a half. And at this point, I'm really impressed with what they've brought, and I'm really impressed with the roster changes and the dynamic ability of everyone in the Sonics to continuously cycle through roles if someone's having a better day than the other. For FaZe Clan, despite the fact that they went out kind of early at Raleigh, they went out in quarters, I genuinely thought that they were the third best looking team in that event. Maybe a little bit uh, objectable on who looked the best, um, but they were very, very close to beating Empire, and that's, that's a huge amount to me. If they go out in groups in DreamHack Montreal, it wouldn't technically be last, um, because this uh, group did have the team go out in the elimination match. Supernova will get last in this group. But still, that's like devastating for FaZe Clan to go from so good back to so bad. They clearly don't want that. Ion hits the initial headshot onto Gonfi to start this round off, and that's a very good opening pick. Well, I was so concerned for FaZe Clan there because they left everyone in server. It was a three stack inside a server after the CCTV hatch was opened up by Gonfi, but a beautiful shot hit there by Ion allows, allows them flexibility, allows them mobility to get back into sight, to retreat to safety. Asphyxiating Bolt being used, and that'll cut down Mav. So there goes the pulse in one trade. You still have Ion and Yuna 
Playing inside a server, Unit playing point blank, a flashbang caught by the new place ADS. Coming out with a shotgun, but with the second one will connect though, and there goes Slebin. Man, advantage back in the favor of the Brazilians. Oh, you're gonna make my heart skip a beat. That was so close, and Island gets his second of the round as well. Sonics are gonna have to struggle and pull this one back. It's Super and Goddess, but I've seen this before, and we know that these two are very, very much capable of making stuff happen. Got us back on her original role of being a hard support onto the Thermite. Seems like on attack, she's not as comfortable playing those fragging operators, but still playing onto this one. Maybe can make something happen with Super by her side. Super also on more of a supportive role. So this could be tough, but a good initial frag from Goddess takes down Ion. He was a big fragger so far in this round, but on the staircase, she will meet her match. Do you know with a shotgun and at least Super? Oh, the long range shotgun. Yuna's getting cocky. I think he feels like he really wants to win this one. And with the SMG 11, he'll do it. Faze kind of take round seven off big plays from Ion and Yuna. Back to the lead now here for Faze. It's been a while since we've been saying that. Oh, yeah. They were in the driver's seat for the first half of Cafe, back and forth. Mm -hmm. That has not been the case on Bank. It's been the Sonics dictating pace throughout this entire map. And finally, Faze able to piece together three in a row. And now here for, uh, now here for Faze, it's getting, uh, it's getting better. Definitely. Yeah, I think Faze Clan, as much as we're saying, like, oh, they're the best team, in the, one of the best teams in the world, and they can't drop it here, and, like, the Sonics have been looking fantastic. And I think all of that is true. Um, Faze Clan still look like they have a good shot in this map, and I don't think there's ever been a point in the series where we've said, like, Sonics have been totally did not, like, demolishing Phase Clan. It's just that I think no. the expectations were so much higher for Phase Clan. Yep. The fact that it's been close means that we're highlighting a lot more like, well, the Sonics have been doing a great job keeping up with Phase Clan. That's not to say that Phase Clan uh, have been playing poorly or that they have looked like they're going to lose the series at any point in time. Well, of course, this was a uh, re-hosted re game after three rounds. And uh, Ion, ever since that re-host, has definitely turned it on a little bit. And I mean, that round right there as well, you don't win that round if Gonfi doesn't die on that hatch. You know, you have to hit that miraculous shot, and Ion did. And honestly, that's, again, the individual ability of all of these players on phase. They can get down in the dirt and turn this into an absolute frag fest. It doesn't even need to focus around utility. It doesn't need to focus around planting or objective play. Both FaZe and the Sonics now can turn this into an absolute gunslinging fest. And I think that's where FaZe are a little more comfortable right now. I think they're getting out smarted on the strategy side of things. Especially with the time control, they're trying to take things extremely, extremely coordinated and extremely procedurally, instead of just kind of playing fluid like we're used to seeing phase play. Ion on the dock is a very exciting operator for me, and he's going to be playing up top, looking for somebody in the parking garage. Nobody is there, um, but even if he's not able to get this initial opening gunfight that he's looking for, um, taking control of this lobby is going to be very strong. So don't be staring at somebody who seems to be staring back at him, but it looks like phase Clan, a member who it was, doesn't actually see that drone, so a little bit of information uh, being gained by the Sonics. They can again try to keep this uh, held on tight. Cameraman was the one who was being spotted out, but he gets this castle barricade up, so he's going to be back safe and sound right before Slevin actually comes in a position where he would have been able to get that punish. So that drone, that little bit of information doesn't turn into anything, but it's, it might be a little bit worrying that Faceplan are letting that slip. That was, uh, was looking like a good pinch there for the Sonics in the attack. They had Cameraman cordoned off. He had no idea he was on drone, but... A sixth sense for cameraman allows him to escape to safety. Now he's peeking out back behind the teller's desk, and he's going to retreat back once again. So Gonfi just playing for control right now inside of lobby to make sure that the people on North Repel and the windows are going to be safe. Neptune's going to start things off onto Astro. There goes your Maestro extremely early, and there are multiple members for Phageland playing downstairs. The site is now looking very soft without Arnaldo behind it. Yeah, this is definitely looking good for the Sonics to get back into the driver's seat, equalize this game once again. You see the MP getting thrown out, and just with that, Gonfi will start to open things up as well. This bomb site sort of being picked apart. We're just past that minute and a half mark, as we say. There are still castle barricades that they're going to have to deal with, but the big one here is off, so I think Slevin's not going to be too, too worried about that. Still got some of those crossbow bolts he can try to utilize. We're supposed to get that plant down or fire to try to burn people out of the positions that they want to try to hold on to. Nothing's still worried about somebody who might be downstairs, and we see there are people downstairs for Phase Clan. Just a moment. Um, likely the cameraman is the guy who's still lurking down there. Yes, it is. So he hasn't really moved. Still inside of Tellers. Interesting that he wouldn't try to start rotating back up to the top floor because Sonics are really starting to put pressure on it. Perhaps that's what he's up to now if he wants to go into the skylight, but he still might try to find somebody. And Yuna's going to drop down with him. Oh, there's three players from Phase Gun that have dropped down. There's just Ion on the top floor, and Cameraman's getting kills because of it. Neptune's down on that first floor. All's going to get cleaned up, and Cameraman getting a lot of kills as Gonfi's trying to be able to shut him down. Ion with another one. Finally, Gonfi does hit that shot, but he's might have uh, done all that he needs to. That damage could have been done. 
Base guy on a three on two. They're definitely gonna like this position. There's somebody inside of Archives with you. Oh, they're gonna find each other. Mav and Super both find a kill apiece. Super getting traded out. Gompy finds somebody behind him. He's getting very surprised, but he hits the shot regardless. Ion being able to shut down Gomfi and maybe shouldn't have made his position as known as it was. That looks so good for the Sonics. The asphyxiating bolt, forcing Yuna to drop down the janitor hatch. The only person on site for FaZe was Ion. But the retreat from Cameraman coming up uh, square stairs catches everyone on Sonics off guard. He gets two kills for it. Ion tacks on after that delay from the Sonics. Super has to go downstairs to hunt everyone. Oh, that looked so good for the Sonics. They had everyone cleared out. They had the ability to push into sight and just take that 1v1 against Ion by front desk. And then just turning the tables as Cameraman whipping up square stairs and grabbing two. A beautiful play there for Cameraman out of pure desperation. And now Slevin, we saw an Ash band on Cafe against him. He's going to go to Ash now, getting off the Capital. And now FaZe Clan, they have a nice little cushion here. They've been on a bit of a run as of late. Ever since the rehost, they've been looking a lot better. So now it's up to the Sonics to match that. Try and wrap this up on a 2-0, or we're going to go the distance once again. Ash, the most popular operator for this level, played it more than anything else on attack in Pro League Season number 10. Definitely very comfortable with it, and uh, he's got a lot of kills so far in this one, too. Right, you talk about FaZe Clan in that last round, I think a lot of it was that mid-round adaptation that they were able to pull off against the Sonics, really cut them off guard. They moved down to Staff Room Open Area, and this is going to be one where they can kind of do the same thing. If, unlike Locker's uh, CCTV, you can sort of do it, like, you can sort of play around a lot more, right? You can go up to that top floor and fire down below. You can rotate through the basement. You can do all sorts of things um, when you're playing a such a flexible bomb site like this one. So I really like the fact that they're coming back here. It's instead of um, Archive's Tellers, which isn't a bomb site that you can uh, necessarily not rotate on as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, come around to this bomb site, try to play it. Do some uh, shenanigans, mix stuff up. I don't hate it. Mav's taking a lot of damage. Slevin's getting headshots. Wow, I talked about how we love playing the Ash. Really turning it on here in round number nine. Just runs on in and he gets a drop shot. Player going down. Astro also going to fall, but they're going to trade this right on back. It's a very fast push on the bomb side. Ion with two, but he eventually got traded. It's a two on three. All of a sudden, FaZe Clan have almost nothing to play with. Mav on very little HP had fallen to his death, and Neptune finishes it. <laughs> that round went by so quickly. Socks are going to get it, though. Talk about time control. It's been a uh, harping point for me against FaZe. And, oh, boy, Sonic's turned that one around real quick. I didn't even get to talk the whole round. <laughs> hey, man, there was stuff going on. Can't blame me. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. That was just a quick round for the Sonics there. And they're back within one now. Beautiful. Beautiful round there. And, I mean, the falling to the death was unfortunate. But, man, Slevin started racking up kills in the push through uh, Archives and into Tellers. Ion almost brought that back on the lesion, but yeesh. FaZe just getting rolled over on that site. Didn't really put up much of a fight on the objective at all. Everyone dying off site, and then uh, the Sonics able to bring it back within Get one round to now to 5 4 deficit. And with that, FaZe are going to say, yeah, screw that nonsense. We're going to go back downstairs. Still anybody's game here on bank. And again, to give you the stakes, Sonics won that first map. So if FaZe Clan lose their own map pick here in bank, that's it. They're going home. They're not making it to uh, the bracket stage, which will be played right after this match. For Sonic, again, winning this map, that elevates them. That continues to uh, bring them forward in this tournament. FaZe Clan need to win both this map and Consulate. We've talked on and on about how tired FaZe Clan must be getting. It's a lot of maps that are be playing, and it's a lot of close maps at that. If this one goes continue to be close, the last map was pretty close too. We got 11 rounds in for that one. Then Consulate goes long, then they gotta play quarters. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of siege, right? And uh, FaZe Clan, credit to them, keeping up the pace with Sonic, despite uh, their tiredness, and still looking to play maybe a little bit aggressive as Cameraman's throwing out some black eyes inside a garage. I think for FaZe, it's about taking this one round at a time and just not getting caught up in it. Not getting caught up in the map count and just trying to close this one out. Not allow the Sonics to get back into it. You allow the Sonics to take that kind of tempo against you, it's going to be a bad time. So for FaZe, I think going back downstairs is definitely the right call. This is the round where you're able to stall the most with your server hold. And honestly, I think the setup for the Sonics last time attacking the site was fine. It was just the beautiful shot Ion hit onto Gomfi after he opened up the CC hatch, which looks like he's about to do once again in the same progression. And, you know, we talk about the time control for FaZe that they had in their attacks. They weren't opening up hatches until a minute 30. Sonics are getting it done 45 seconds, 50 seconds in. Sonics are going to have to go perfect if they don't want to win this one in overtime. 
Um, and that's not impossible, but Locker CCTV again has been a very difficult bomb site for both teams to attack on. Ooh, got us a lot of information. There's two people inside of the blue stairs, and Sonos are definitely going to use that information to their advantage. Got us now watching the top of those staircases in case somebody wants to uh, jump on in. And Neptune's going to rotate all the way through the tunnel, through the sewer, try to make it into the uh, server room where he can maybe catch them off guard. This could be a really big flank coming in. He's going to have to draw himself, and there is somebody playing inside there that he's going to have to worry about. Saw him just there on the left side of his screen. So he's going to be aware of that. Um, there's a lot of players just lurking into the server's area, and if Sonics aren't careful, or FaZe Clan aren't careful, Sonics could come around and do a really devastating pinching maneuver. Oh, Ion down to about 5 HP now. They still have a member of FaZe Clan playing on the server stairs to worry about. I think. <laughs> Maybe not. Bullet holes. Yep. Yeah, bottom, yeah. Uh, top server stairs now. It's the smoke of Yuna. That impact's going to, or the concussion is going to go off and give away his location. The bottom of the stairs. Neptune's ready and waiting. The shotgun will miss. And that's Neptune's collecting the kill onto the smoke. Still have about a minute to work with here if the Sonic's time is low. God, I can't run down the stairs because their own teammates are asphyxiating Bolt. They've both taken a little bit of damage because of it, but the Sonic's in good control now with hatches. They have server. They should pop open the wall here and start going for the plant, bait out the utility, and play the post plant from the hatches. This should be a Sonic's win here, barring this miraculous flank that it looks like someone's going to attempt from phase. Oh, yes. Look at Cameraman. He's up on that top floor, and nobody's watching out for him. They have no idea that he's actually up there, so he can cause so much havoc. Slevin's just running up haphazardly. No, now the call's been made. Now it seems like he knows someone's over there. Well, he's pushing over to the skylight, and he's doing a whole lot of work. Slevin finds him inside of the janitor's room, and he'll be able to shut him down. But still, he's done a little bit of damage, and the Sonics are going to miss Super, of course, in the rest of this round. Still, the player adds the going for this plant. It's going well. Neptune's able to shut down Astro, who's trying to go for this peak and stop him, but he will eventually get felled by Ion. Here's the drop. Slevin's in it. He's able to kill that uh, player trying to stop the plan. It's all on Mav and a one on three. He's got to get this disable off as well. He's in the midst of some smoke. He's a lot of these holes, but he doesn't know which one to pick. It's going to be on the other side of things to equalize. Sonic's right back in this game. You see Super throw up the deuces. Two more. Two more. <laughs> it's all they need. Two more rounds. There's a bit of a run there for FaZe. You know, they get three in a row. They're really starting to tear away with it. And then picking up the tempo there for the Sonics. That flank from Cameraman could have been the end of it all. But Slevin able to retreat up the stairwell as fast as humanly possible on a three-speed Capital and pick him apart after the trade. And they just have too much utility and too much manpower to deal with. Neptune's hitting probably the most crucial shot of that entire round onto Astro playing the long angle on the Maestro. So now it's FaZe having to respond and adapt. That flank nearly worked for Cameraman. But the Sonics, again, good adaptation, good response. This is a Sonics team we just have not seen play at this level before. And it's everybody contributing, right? Yep. I mean, Super's having his moments. God is playing on the Gagger was really popping off. That last round, Neptune, the adaptation, I think, was playing fantastic. The two European players as well, really putting in the work they need to. Um, very much spread out in terms of the kills. Less so for some of the support players like Super and Goddess. Uh, but Goddess had a lot before that rehost, keep it in mind. Um, and the Super's doing his part, right? Uh, the one kill they was able to get, I think, was pretty crucial to him winning the round. Um, that being the trade when he was over on Pulse. So, base clan, they're a little bit more lopsided, right? If it's Ion getting shut down, they're having a lot of struggles with that. He's got 14 kills on the server right now. And so that's great to have somebody popping off like that, but the rest of the team isn't there to support. If the rest of the team is also participating in the kills, well, one on five, you're never going to win that. Yeah, and I think here for for FaZe, I, I don't know what the uh, what the mindset is looking like right now for Cameraman. He did have that flank opportunity, and I don't know, he's, he's hanging around. He's lingering upstairs momentarily on the Valkyrie. I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't hate a roaming attempt here for FaZe. It seems like when they're stacking up on the objective, Cameraman's gonna go back downstairs anyway. I'm just thinking, man, if they could if they could add a little more time control disparity for the Sonics. I, like I said, they're getting in, they're getting hatches in 45 seconds. That's a problem for FaZe. They're not stalling that out, and that's just the Sonics taking advantage of the free map that FaZe are giving them. This server stairs hold as well, seemingly getting picked apart. The ADS tricking from Ion is working to eat up a lot of utility, but the hatches are getting up, opened up so quickly that everyone who plays in server has to play to their death because their return is cut off. And that's something I'm loving to see from the Sonics because I was watching like six months ago in Challenger League. That was a huge problem for them, right? They were very slow, and the teams that were beating them were these aggressive teams, such as FaZe Clan, right? They were able to just walk on over them, to totally destroy them in the pacing game, and uh, really just make Sonics look like a bunch of wet noodles. And this one, though, Sonics has done a excellent job of accelerating their own pace and keeping up with FaZe Clan, and uh, I mean, we're 5-5 five, five here on bank. It's going to go the distance all 12 rounds. They've been looking very, very good, and so as they get to open this bomb site up, get into that uh, archives area, I think they're in a great position. 
Well, I do like the retreat this time from FaZe. Looks like Gonfi was a little late getting the hatch open and wasn't playing it for the retreat. So everyone on FaZe able to escape to safety now this time inside of the site. That opens up more flanking opportunities for people like Cameraman after he uses his Nitro Cell. But that's tough timing to, to kind of coalesce there because you want to be able to use your Nitro Cell on site for plant denial. If you don't, there's only one remaining in Mav's pocket. And this is a lot of utility upstairs too. Slebin playing the hatch with Gonfi. That stuns, that's asphyxiating bolts, that's smoke bolts as well. Gonfi's going to drop down again. Swiss cheese the hell out of this wall. It's been working out pretty well for him. Everyone that's tried to peek him, implementing a little bit of what he saw from Cameraman as well. Yeah, this is, this is a good spot again for the Sonics. Just the utility in the side of phase needs to get started baiting out now by the Sonics. Swiss cheese is a great way to describe this wall. Gonfi just makes it so difficult to attack against. And you still have a little bit of hesitation with the Sonics, right? They aren't fully downstairs just yet, but they're playing these hashes, right? They're doing what they need to do. And they've got a lot of pin pings, as you can Lights see, out. on the FaZe Clan members. We're at 35 seconds of survive on five. That's a little bit worrying for the Sonics, but it's pretty standard on this bomb site as well. Neptune holding the angle. He was good here last time. He needs to be good again. Gone with a bit of an unconventional plant. She will get caught off by a C4, though, so that's not going to trick the guys over on FaZe Clan. And there's 25 seconds to pick this up and go for it again. They will try it one more time with Neptune. That one's also going to be unsuccessful as Astro guns him down with two plant attempts. Both of them killed by FaZe Clan. They're going to stop another player as he tries to get down those stairs. Slab and no hope for him at all, but now finally Super's come down and he's popping off. That's two kills, but he's going to need the ace and it's not going to happen. It's Yuna with the last two of the round and FaZe Clan to put themselves on match points. It's a tough one there for the Sonics because they tried to trick FaZe. They tried to go to an alternate plant spot behind the bomb chassis instead of playing default, but it's too close to the Nitro Cell being sent out. Anyone playing inside a Red Hall is going to launch that Nitro Cell basically in line with the desk straight at the server wall facing the server rack, just so it covers the most surface areas possible. If you launch it straight on that parallel line on that plane, it will have enough lethality with splash damage to get anyone planting right up against the breached open server wall or playing bomb chassis on the plant. So attempted there. Um, I'm curious why smoke bolts weren't necessarily utilized there for Slebin. He used the, uh, the asphyxiating bolts in the, uh, in the red hall to try and catch anyone holding nitro cells. But outside of that, there was no like disruption of visibility. There were a lot of angles still being held by phase where they picked off and Attackers constantly fired in. Everyone could see bombs. where Goddess was going. And we didn't catch necessarily if that evil eye right above the CC desk was taken care of or not. They did fatch at it twice, so they sent two EMPs at it. Not sure if it was able to get shot or not. So the smokes obviously would be dependent on that, but you know, there's there's no disruption of visibility there. You're trying to go for a sneaky plant when they can still see where you're going. For Executive being our final bomb site, um, this is one that was defended one time by the guys over on Phase Clan, and it was a successful defense for them. Um, interesting, they didn't go back to the last round, of course, it being open to them, but Locker's clearly not a bad choice for them either. It's going to be a tough one, right? I mean, you've got still Ion on the dock, and last time it was that mid-round adaptation that worked so, so well for them, moving around the map. Sometimes dropping down three players and leaving Ion alone on the bomb site is okay for phase nine. That's kind of what we learned in the last one. Um, and so they're going to be very content. Probably to do a similar strategy as before. Yeah, CEO was looking really good the last time the Sonics attacked this. They had the control. They had only one member in Ion on the dock up on top of the objective, even close enough to play in the objective. And everyone else was down on the main floor. And then it was that one flank by Cameraman on the castle up square stairs. So as long as the Sonics can hold that down, and looks like Cameraman's playing in main lobby right now. And again, Slevin getting on the win oh, in the windows. He's going to spot him there. It's about 50 damage or so. Another peek from Cameraman bar darting back and forth. Cannot find the angle, and no, the pair is going to rip right through him. So a great opener here for the Susquehanna Sonics to keep themselves alive on map two. Require overtime to get the victory, but it means you don't have to play on map three at all. And they caught him out in the lobby, and they did the exact same thing last time, but Cameraman last time never even realized that he'd been found on a drone. And so they just used the exact same drone, found him again, and this time they were a little bit quicker to be able to pinch him and punish him for being in that very aggressive position. And this time he wasn't able to use his spidey senses and uh, escape in just the nick of time. So that's an advantage for Sonics, and that could be game changing because again, the last round, Cameraman's like flanks were huge for FaZe Clan. The fact that they're not gonna have that this time could be the difference maker to so get the half minute mark in this round. The other thing that really set the tone early for the Sonics the last time they attacked this was Neptune's getting the opening pick onto Astro. This time around, Astro's playing a little bit safer. Obviously, they've blown open the wall entirely to have visibility from the front desk with both of their ACOGs. But this should be uh, 
It should be a position that everyone in the Sonic should be trying to target. And Neptune's taking a lot of damage from the Alder this time and not dealing any. Ion gonna boost him up with the Stim Pistol as well, just to make sure he can persevere a little bit longer through this engagement. A lot of bolts being utilized here. Astro gets the first kill for his team. Equalizing to four on four, Neptunes will fall. And that's going to be a little bit more difficult for the Sonics. Of course, Neptunes was on that Thatcher roll. It's been a lot of operator swaps for the Sonics. We've seen a lot of people play different uh, things, and Neptunes in particular has been anything from heavy fragger to heavy support at this time. It seems like his utility will be missed as they continue to go against Phase Clan up on this top floor. Gomfi's been creeping up these central stairs. He's got a Valkyrie right below him, though. And if Mav goes aggressively with this flank, that could be so devastating. Here he comes. Is he going to time this perfectly? That's the question. Oh, just misses him, but his teammates seem to be doing all the work for him. God's going to be able to take down Yunus. That flank maybe wasn't all that they wanted. Ion comes in for his double kill. Goddess is going to go down. That's just one player, and they will be able to do it. It's super falling. Base clan 